Welcome back to the podcast. Um, by the way, I, we recently did a podcast with um, with Ramon Henry, who is the an IT director, IT geek, one of our vice presidents here, um, running our IT cybersecurity, cyber solutions, so on and so forth. Also, the president at Ant Business Solutions. But I had him on the show, and um, when we finished recording the show. I got to share this with you, Dante. When I finish recording, so I'm going to talk to you about something real quickly, splitting the infinitives. I learned, you know, the title of the show was how to effectively stop or prevent DDoS, brute force attack, worms, other cyber threats or cyber attack. How to effectively. So after I published the podcast, I said, wait, it seems as if I, I split the infinitive. I, I think I split the infinitive. I don't think that's correct. How to if because you know I'm old. How to effectively stop? You are told I'm from the I'm from the old school. I studied old English, so they said you don't split the infinitive. So I said, wait, that's oh wow, I'm gonna have to change the title. I said, let, let me find out. Maybe they have changed English. Let me check. Let me just verify. So I went on my um computer and and was talking with my assistant, Chat GPT assistant. And um, I got to share this with you because I find this to be quite, um, I find it, I found it to be, ooh, quite powerful, quite powerful about splitting the infinitives. Ooh, what's going on here? I kind of, I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to, I got to, I have to share this with you, Dante. I got to share this with you guys um, for, for, for you writers and English majors and so on and so forth. But um where is it? Actually, no, that's not what it is. Uh, is this it? Mm. I'll be right there. Here we go. So this is the conversation I had with AI. I said, I asked AI, is this sentence correct? How to effectively stop DDoS and cyber attacks? According to, this was AI response. The sentence you provided has a minor grammatical error. It should be how to effectively stop DDoS and cyber attacks. Um, I added effectively before stop to make it grammatically correct. But then I said, what about splitting the infinitives? Did I, did I split the infinitives when I say how to effectively stop something? The response. In the sentence, uh, listen to AI's response. In the sentence, how to effectively stop DDoS and cyber attacks, there is indeed a split infinitive. Of course, that, that much we know. I'm asking you that. But anyways, uh, AI continue. Yo, um, I call my, um, I have a name for my, um, for my AI, but it says, according to him, a split infinitive occurs when an adverb or other word is split between two and the base form of a verb, in this case, effectively splits the infinitive to stop, so to stop the infinitive to stop. So instead of say to stop, I put to effectively stop. So effectively, the adverb, the adverb is between to and stop. So split infinitives are not considered grammatically incorrect in modern English. Before that, it was it would be incorrect and gr grammatically incorrect, but in modern English. Split in infinitives are not considered grammatically incorrect, and they are often used to add emphasis or clarity to a sentence. Now, while some traditional grammar rules suggested avoiding split infinitives, this is no longer a strict rule in contemporary English. Many style 
guides and language experts now accept split infinitives as a valid and sometimes preferable construction. So your sentence, how to effectively stop DDoS and cyber attacks is grammatically correct and widely accepted in modern English. I'm <laughs> so I responded by saying, I am old school. So I was taught never to split the infinitives, but it seems English has evolved from that. It is a good thing as although it was grammatically incorrect to split the infinitives, everyone did it except the very few academics. That was, this is my response. But practice has become the standard. Is that not the case here? AI, AI responded. You're correct in noting that rule against splitting in infinitives was more rigid in the past, and it was often taught as an absolute prohibition in formal writing. However, as the English language has evolved, so have the attitudes towards grammar rules, including the split infinitive rule. In modern English, splitting, splitting infinitives is generally considered acceptable and even preferred in many cases when it helps to clarify the meaning or adds emphasis to a sentence, as in, say, for example, or the title of our podcast here, of the episode, how to effectively, because the thing is, I... I saw that there were many podcast episodes with that. Um, when I did a search, there were many ep podcast episodes and videos dealing with how to stop cyber attacks. But um, so I didn't want to use that same title really, but I still wanted to provide that same title without. So I wanted to. So I said, wait, I need to provide more emphasis because this particular podcast episode is different because it is because we're providing. We not only are we dealing with the uh, particular kind of or dealing with several different things so i said this is how to effectively so i wanted to add more emphasis so i decided to go with effectively because i so that it can stand out against the rest <laughs> and to also not to confuse this the episode with any other episodes or um or videos or podcasts that with that particular title so that's that's the example. So language evolves over time and usage ultimately shapes the rules. And in practice, split infinitives have become common and are widely accepted in both formal and informal writing. And just so you know, many styles such as the Chicago Manual of Style and the Modern Language Association, that's the MLA handbook, no longer maintain strict pro prohibitions against split infinitives. They acknowledge that clarity and natural expression should often take precedence over old-fashioned prescriptive rules. And I am a fan of that as a post-colonial scholar, as a liberal, as a critical thinker, as a critical thinker, um, as a Homi Baba follower. I completely agree. This is, this is, this is profoundly important. Um, and part of what when Fanon, when you see how Fanon write in terms of his violent of language, not subscribing to to the way in which comparisons are done. Say, for example, he said the Negro is not and then put a period and then says not any more than the white man. That's two different sentences, which could have been one, but he puts a period there. So while some traditionalists may still prefer to avoid split infinitives in certain situations, it is no longer considered a grammatical error in contemporary English. The practice of splitting infinitives has indeed become the standard in many cases. So that was my experience um, um, with, a particular, with a particular language issue and how we can utilize technology to imp to, to, for better understanding and awareness as content creators. This is the Nearly Boy Run Podcast. <laughs> That concludes the essence of my conversation with Johan regarding the accuracy of a title I employed. And Johan, again, is my chat GPT open AI assistant. Um, this discussion has been enlightening, offering deeper insights into how technology has significantly advanced, making it more accessible and user friendly. What used to necessitate formal education? may no longer be the case today. YouTube's wealth of DIY, uh, do-it-yourself videos, DIY videos, and AI-driven tools provide invaluable assistance in navigating the complexities of professional life. What's imperative now is for individuals to become tech-savvy, capable of framing questions for AI, 
and utilizing technology to access answers and support. It's no surprise that enrollment in community colleges and some four-year institutions has plummeted by as much as 37%. College dropout rates, especially among African Americans, remain unacceptably high. Traditional institutional learning is gradually becoming obsolete, largely due to the influence of technology. Furthermore, language itself is evolving, with popular language gaining acceptance in academic and formal writing. As we move forward, we must proactively plan for the societal changes that demand adjustment in education, what we teach, and how we teach. Since technology and popular culture are increasingly integrated into modern society. I'm Ronaldo McKenzie. We'll be right back after these messages. I mean, well, we'll be right back after this. There aren't any messages. We'll wrap up after this. Thank you for listening. And just so you know, I am working on releasing the new book, Nearly Boy Globalization Reconsidered New York Capitalism and the Death of Nations. And just so you know, I'm, I, the manuscript that I had actually had about 500 or 600 pages, about 700 pages, but I'm re, I'm, I'm editing the entire thing. And actually what the edited, what I have now is much better than what, if I had released the book a month ago or two months ago, it would not have been this great. What I have now is much better than what would have been. So I am happy that for the, that I had delayed it because I just was not happy with, with what it was, but. When you look at what we have now, it is almost ready. You will fully enjoy the second book, the second academic textbook looking at neoliberal globalization reconsidered, neo-capitalism and the death of nations. And just so you know, you notice the death of nations, it's a play upon Adam Smith, wealth of nations. You're going to thoroughly enjoy it. And by the, just as though you enjoyed um, my first book, Neoliberalism, Globalization, Income Inequality, Poverty and Resistance. And this second book actually builds on that, on the same theme, but it goes deeper and wider. Um, so if you haven't gotten a copy of the first book, please, it's available here at the Neoliberal Corporation, the neoliberal.com or renaldocmckenzie.com. It's available in all platforms, um, ebook, paperback, hardcover. Um, it's also available on Amazon um, and, and in Audible. Um, so you can get it from Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Walmart, Target, several other stores. Um, you can um, also send me an email at info at the neoliberal.com if you need um, me to send you an autographed copy of it. Um, we can talk, you can go on my website as well, the neoliberal.com or renaldocmckenzie.com and, um, and you can visit us there. At, now, if you can't get me, the, if you are having difficulty, a very good way to reach me is by going to my Twitter page, which, I, um, which is Renaldo McKenzie, which is Renaldo without the O and without the Y, it's actually R E N A L D O McKenzie M C K E N Z I E Ronaldo McKenzie. We also are at the Neoliberal Co. We have a page on the Neoliberal Co. Visit us on Facebook, Ronaldo McKenzie, or the Neoliberal or the Neoliberal Corporation. We're on, on Instagram as well, Ronaldo McKenzie or the Neoliberal Co. LinkedIn, Reddit, and so on and so forth. We are everywhere. There's nowhere where, where we are not. We're all about serving the world today to solve tomorrow's challenges by making popular what was the monopoly. We are a think tank, a dynamic news agency that provides publishing and other web hosting and business solution services. And please support us. Donate to our podcast by going to the neoliberal by going to anchor.fm slash the neoliberal slash support. And also subscribe to any podcast stream. We are also on YouTube. This particular episode is in audio and it may not be on um, YouTube, um, we will, uh, it's, but it's available in audio on all our audio streams. But thank you for supporting us. Thank you for listening. Thank you for all your support. Please share this podcast with your friends. If you would like me to come and speak um, with, your, uh, with, with, your, with some of your um, friends or your, in a school or a group, um, if you want me to do a, um, a podcast with 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 your with with um with um to promote some of what you are about, please let me know. Share us your audio podcast and send us a feedback at anchor.fm slash the neoliberal. What good.